It's been a wild year. You know, this year I've gotten so many calls. Actually, if I had a dollar for every call that I got that someone that wasn't happy with their agent or the house that they bought in the last couple of years, well, I wouldn't be able to retire, but I'd be able to buy myself lunch for sure. And this actually even happened to one of my clients as well. And there have been numerous articles written over the past few months about this. The New York Times had an article on how people rushed into their house. And CNBC puts the number at about 72% of people that have regrets about their home purchase during the pandemic. And I get it. It was an unprecedented time. Rates were really low, housing was in really short supply, and there was a lot of people moving. But in this video, I'm gonna talk about some of the most common things I heard when I took these phone calls this year. I've broken them out into a few different sections in hopes that it will give you something else to think about if you're planning a move so you don't make the same mistakes that they made. I'm Jeff Valentino. My real job is helping people buy and sell real estate. I encourage you to check out my reviews on Google. Go to my real estate website, govalentino.com. And we also have a community website, livinginwinstonsalem.com with a ton of resources and stuff there as well. But if you need to buy or sell real estate, my contact information is below. Now I should say there's gonna be trade-offs on almost all of these things, right? If you need to be within 15 minutes of your work or you really have to have a certain school district and your budget is only X amount, you know, there's gonna be trade-offs on here. So you're gonna to have to prioritize. But one thing I want you to take away from this is don't just prioritize the house itself. Do your same list of must-haves and nice-to-haves for the area, your commute, and things like that as well. So the first group I wanna talk about is problems with the location and commute. You know, the Winston-Salem area, especially when you include the suburbs, is a pretty large geographic area. It's wide and it is long and it can take some time to get from one side of town to the other. The benefit of that is there's not always a ton of traffic, but it is worth taking a little bit closer look. One of the things I suggest people do is go on Google Maps, look in the area where you're thinking about purchasing at, and look where you're going to commute to most often, whether that's work or you need to get to shopping or to downtown restaurants and things like that. And when you're on that Google Map, you can check out traffic patterns and you can even select the different times of day. But just know that you know if you're living in Winston-Salem and you work in Greensboro, that's going to be a commute on 40 that a lot of people take. And during typical rush hour times, while we don't have a lot of you know traffic like in big cities, that does tend to get a little bit busier on those typical rush hour times. So take that Google map and look at those different times of day and see if that's something that you even really want to consider. One example of that, and then just of the area itself, is I live you know less than 15 minutes from Whole Foods. I can get there in 12 or 13 minutes, but it feels further because I have to get on the highway most of that drive is highway driving so it's like oh man I got to go all the way to Whole Foods when really it's actually not that far it can just start to seem that way it wasn't a deal breaker for me but if you have that magnified by a couple times or for every little thing that you have to do you should go into that with your eyes open as far as what is in store for you as far as commute goes same can be said if you need a really walkable neighborhood if that's a really high priority for you that's going to limit your choices a lot because there aren't a ton of walkable areas in Winston-Salem you're going to be pretty close to downtown or in downtown itself and that might not line up with school or work and things like that but if you need a walkable area that's something to consider but more common is if you want to be closer to you know walking trails or certain shopping and restaurants or schools and things like that that's much more doable you can really just hone down area by looking at those top priorities for you the next problem we ran into a lot were the size and layout of the homes that people bought now it's common sense but a three bedroom home can range you know from a 900 to 1000 square foot bungalow in Ardmore all the way to you know, well over 2,000 square feet, but also think about the age and layout of the house as well. You know, you have some of those 70s ranches where it's nice, everything's on one level, but it's a long house with one hallway with the, all the bedrooms right off of there. So that may or may not work for you, but also as you're looking, look and see, you know, are there enough play areas for the kids or is there a basement for a workshop or different spaces for a home office or something like that? So go beyond just a little bit more of the size of the house and really start to take a look at if the layout is actually gonna work for you in your everyday life. Some people prefer, you know, the older, more separate floor plans, and some people like the new, more modern open ones. And those are gonna be different things for different people. Some of that's gonna obviously gonna be personal preference, but it is worth taking a second look at to see really if that works for you, especially if you're going to visit houses, but even before that, when you're taking that first look online. Next section we ran into a lot were price and budget issues. Now, I'm a really big fan of not maxing out your budget unless you really have to, and if the house really checks almost all the boxes that you want to check, I'm a big fan of really trying to stay under that budget. And I understand it's difficult in times like this with higher prices and higher rates. But just know this, if it's a brand new house or an older existing house, you're going to have to probably put some money into it somewhere, right? If it's a new house, you're going to have to buy appliances or landscaping. If it's an older house, it might need work to be done, some odds and ends, handyman fix-ups. Maybe you need to update or freshen up some rooms, you know, those things like that. But just leave some room in your budget for repairs, add-ons, and things like that. There are very few houses that are just move-in ready, everything is exactly how you want it, and you're just bringing 
bring your clothes and you're done. That's a rare find. What you do want to know about are big expenses, right? Or deal breakers. So let's take a look at the age of the mechanicals and the roof. Get some clues on how the previous owner took care of the home. And we can do that a lot of different ways when we're walking through the house. And then keep an eye out for big deal breaker issues, right? If you cannot stand an old outdated electrical system, then we have to make sure that that's been upgraded. Or if a roof over 15 or 20 years old is a killer for you because they're so expensive to replace, then we need to know that. Make sure you're not even considering a house with a roof that's 20 years old if that's a deal breaker for you. By having these things really listed out and some room in your budget for the unexpected, you can deal with these and when the inevitable comes up, you'll be able to take care of it. The next big one, I saw this very common, was the community and actually the connections within the community. And while it's true, you can't always pick your neighbors, you can pick your neighborhood. And Winston-Salem has a variety of different houses, neighborhoods, and lifestyles in it. There are some neighborhoods that have a real neighborhood vibe where they have people out talking to each other all the time. They have neighborhood events that are long held traditions where they have block parties and the neighbors, you know, watch the house while they're on vacation. Well, there are other neighborhoods that aren't like that. Some of them, it just might be a group of neighbors in a cul-de-sac that started to get together, you know, a few times a year and they do it right in the middle. I've seen that. But there are some that are just different, right? Still friendly, but people tend to keep to themselves more. Maybe these are the houses with bigger lots. Or here's a big one. If you're in the middle of a changing neighborhood, right, where part of the neighborhood is kind of aging out and moving on and there are just starting to be some younger families coming in, that's going to be a much different feel where a lot of the neighbors might keep to themselves or you might not have as much in common with kids in school and sports and things like that. It doesn't necessarily mean it's bad, but if you're someone that really needs connection and really wants to be neighborly with your neighbors, then that's definitely something to consider because these neighborhoods in Winston-Salem and the suburbs can have some really different feels to them. So as we're looking in these, we're not just looking at the house itself, right? We want to really look a level deeper into the neighborhood. I had a client that moved here because friends moved here in the last few years. They came out here and they just really did not like the neighborhood that they were in. Granted, they were only 15 minutes from where their friends lived, which is not that far, but their immediate neighborhood and neighbors, they just didn't click with. It was a totally different feel than what they were expecting. By going just one level deeper, besides just the house and the price itself, what does the actual neighborhood and what are the neighbors kind of like there? You can set yourself up for success. If you need help buying or selling real estate anywhere in the Winston-Salem area, I'd love to be a resource for you. You can reach out to me directly at jeff at govalentino.com. Thanks.